Okay, this is not my work. Um, I am talking this evening about a recent um, series that I'm still working on that's inspired by this artist whose name is Olivier Umaker. He's a French artist with a Dutch last name. And what I sort of liked about this work is kind of the difference in density of the elements. He's got these sort of heavy painterly shapes and then these kind of delicate lines. Um, so the different weights of the elements and kind of the aspect that he's, he's throwing these things together. And it's really hard to find information on him or any kind of artist statement. I couldn't find anything about what, what he's thinking. So I thought maybe that was a little better because I'm really just responding to the, um, to the visuals. Uh, he works in watercolor and gouache and ink. How's that? Um, so that's what I was taking the inspiration from. So my first group of work uh, done, inspired by his, his pieces, is done on 12 by 12 paper. And the first group of these slides um, is from, from that. I, you know, I always have a, a challenge working larger. And so it occurred to me in a slideshow, I, can, I could just say these are, you know, 12 feet by 12 <laughs> feet. But, <laughs> But I won't lie, they're 12 inches by 12 inches. And so in this first group, I'm really just trying to develop and establish some kind of vocabulary of elements um, that are different from each other and then throwing them together on the page and seeing different ways that they relate. I'm not trying to make them relate in any particular way. I'm not trying to make the piece look good or make it finished. Um, one, another thing I'm playing with is uh, the density of the piece itself, the sort of um, spareness and visual density. So and th this piece is, is one of the more dense ones. And so here I've got lines and scribbles and patterns and so forth. This one is actually an almost copy of one of Umaker's pieces that he did on an iPad. Um, and one thing I like about that is just taking another artist's work and just copying a bit of it and then, and then maybe taking it somewhere else is it, it really sort of challenges me to make marks that aren't my own and so it kind of opens, opens up possibilities. So this is the last of this set of pieces on the 12 by 12 uh, paper. There's probably 25 of these so I just chose some. I always kind of work that way in, in quantity just to sort of play. So then I was in Johnson at the studio, at the Vermont Studio Center there where I met Janie. And um, I wanted to continue on this series working big. So I, I brought all this paper that's like 30 inches by 44. And that's, you know, not a whole <laughs> taller than I am. So uh, the first evening there, I sort of struggled with this big paper, right? And I brought big brushes and all this. Um, and ultimately, I decided what I had to do is get back to just playing. It was too intimidating. So this next group, inclu um, including the previous piece, are done on 9 by 12 inch cheap drawing paper, um, <laughs> which I keep in my studio in reams. I just keep loads of the stuff around because it, it takes away any pressure of making real work or making art or... Um, and I feel like I'm just playing, and that's when I start to sort of see what it is I'm after, because I, um, I feel like I can do a lot of them relatively quickly. I mean, it depends on what I'm working on, but that first morning at Johnson, I did 20 studies on 9 by 12 cheap drawing paper, still playing with the same, the same stuff, the different elements, spareness, density, throwing stuff together in different ways, seeing what it can do, seeing what it does do. And so, you know, you can see I'm kind of developing um, a bit of a vocabulary that I, that I keep using, that yellow thing on the bottom. Someone referred to that as bubbles. So I'm gonna go with that. And um, these uh, pencil marks on the lower left, those start to look to me like, like a flock of seagulls taking off. So they start to have some reference, but generally, you know, I start with with the abstract visual elements. I think this is the last in this, in this group. So I'm trying to just take disparate elements, not repeating the same thing. 
although in some of the later pieces I do. So I did manage to scale these up a little bit, but I decided to go uh, a little, well, vertical and work 11 inches by 30 inches. So this is the first of those. I mean, it's not the first one I did. I worked on about, I don't know, 12 of them, kind of simultaneously, while in Johnson. And in this group, I started paying more attention to the, the fog aspect of them, the placing these unlike elements in some kind of space. And you know, as I said, I start with the, the abstract visual, but then things occasionally start to make specific reference to me. And I grew up in Nova Scotia where fog is kind of a main ingredient. And uh, so when I see that, I think I really, I really respond to that. And then some of them begin to, um, for me, reference coastline and rocks and water and rusted fishing boats and that sort of thing. I'm taking a breath now. <laughs> so here again, we're getting, we're, I'm playing a little bit with density and spareness and sort of throwing the density or visual weight around the page, just trying, trying different areas. So here it's a little more at the bottom and some of them it's a little more at the top. So density of like where, where the visual weight is along with the varying densities of the individual elements. So this piece to me, it's looking like a boulder and maybe even some barbed wire <laughs> or formerly barbed wire. And then I think, I think this is the last image. Um, I'm kind of really liking the more spare ones where there's a little more fog in front of things. Um, and I just have those two collage elements at the bottom that really sit on the surface. So this is what they kind of are for me, but I really like to leave my work very open to interpretation by the viewer. So thank you.